Before starting with this video, I just wanted to say hello to all of you, my amazing audience, and thank you for following me. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Welcome back to The Deep Dive. If you want the shortest route to being the most informed person in any room, well, you're definitely in the right place. Today we're doing a deep dive into the AI job market of 2025. It's a market that's uh, basically rewriting the rules for professional pay globally. We've pulled together the latest industry reports, some academic analyses too, trying to answer the big questions. Which roles exactly are commanding the top dollar? What specific tech skills are paying these huge premiums? And maybe the most shocking part, just how, well, astronomical have the pay packages become at the absolute top. Our mission today is to give you the blueprint, you know, help you understand how to maximize your leverage in this uh, pretty revolutionary field. Okay, let's unpack this. Just how high is the baseline salary right now? Well, we're starting at a level that um, fundamentally defines this current tech shift. As of April 2025, the median salary for an AI pro globally was already sitting around $160,056 $56 a year. Mm. And look, this isn't just standard inflation. This really reflects a severe demand-driven talent war. We're actually seeing compensation escalating to, well, almost professional athlete levels. It's driven by the fact that demand for top AI talent is just insatiable and the supply is uh, critically scarce. Wow, $160,000 median. That sets an almost unbelievable floor for this whole conversation. And looking at the data we have, the United States, it seems, is still the king of compensation, right? Paying significantly higher than uh, than its global peers. Absolutely. Our reports are showing that the average total pay for an AI professional in the U.S. is about 18% higher than folks working in just general tech roles. That's a pretty significant premium just for specializing in AI. Yeah, it is. And what's fascinating here is how that sort of centralized U.S. demand radiates outward. It creates these massive pay disparities across continents. So if we look at Europe, Switzerland leads the continent. You've got data scientists there averaging about $143,360. Yeah. But then step across the border into major economies like Germany or the U.K., and that average salary, it drops substantially. It's hovering around the $80,000 to $85,000 mark. That's a huge difference within just one economic zone. It really is. And when you pivot to Asia, the landscape gets even more complex, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. You see these pockets of high compensation like Singapore, where the average AI specialist earns about $134,000. That kind of reflects its role as a key financial and tech hub. But then contrast that with a massive market like India, where the average AI salary is reported much lower, uh, somewhere around $16,759. Okay, but there's a catch there, isn't there, with <laughs> growth? Exactly. If we connect this to the bigger picture, the projected salary growth everywhere is actually extremely high. The reason is that U.S. and European companies are increasingly turning to remote hiring to fill their AI gaps. So this means that while maybe an engineer in India might still earn less than their peer in Silicon Valley on paper, they're earning significantly more than the local market average. And that's forcing this upwards equalization of pay globally. Right, the remote factor is pushing wages up everywhere. Okay, so it's one thing to talk about medians, but the data on the absolute top tier, the actual you know, t talent warfare, it, that's truly unbelievable. What are we seeing at big tech for the elite researchers? Uh, the frenzy. The competitive frenzy for those foundational researchers at Elite Labs is, well, it's unprecedented. We're talking about total compensation packages, and this is key. It's driven heavily by equity and bonuses, not just base salary ranging between $500,000 and get this, $2 million annually. Half a million to $2 million. For senior AI researchers at major places like Google, Meta, OpenAI. Yeah. And we have specific benchmarks here, right? Yeah. At OpenAI, which you could argue is the epicenter of this whole talent war. Mm -hmm. The median total compensation for a software engineer is sitting around $875,000. And senior roles there are reportedly pushing past the $1.34 million per year mark. That's right. I mean, I have to stop you there. $1.34 million for an engineer that just resets the entire expectation for tech compensation, doesn't it? It completely does. And it gets even more aggressive. We've seen reports, uh, notably from Reuters, indicating mm -hmm. that Google DeepMind has offered certain you know, truly top tier researchers compensation packages reaching up to $20 million per year. $20 million. That is, that's an enormous sum. What kind of work warrants that kind of valuation? Is it just about building the next big thing? Well, that kind of figure isn't paid for just like incremental improvement. That compensation is purely valuing foundational intellectual risk taking. 
These researchers are seen as strategic chess pieces, right? Their discoveries could change the trajectory of the entire company, maybe even the whole industry. It's basically the cost of securing the person you think might be capable of building the next GPT. Wow. And this high pay, it extends beyond just pure tech firms too. Quant trading firms like Jane Street, they offered new graduate software and quant engineers a total compensation package of $325,000 straight out of school. 325K for a new grad. That signals a really fundamental shift in value, doesn't it? Where technical expertise now clearly outweighs traditional financial prestige, even in finance. Exactly. Okay, but this context on the gap is crucial. If big tech is paying these amounts, where are these experts running from? Who's losing out? Well, they're running from the public and academic sectors, yeah. mostly. And this is creating what's widely reported as a brain drain. Academia and government, they just cannot compete. They operate on fixed university budgets, federal pay scales. A top AI researcher, say, a U.S. assistant professor, might get a base salary of only $120,000 to $150,000. Which sounds good in isolation, but... Right, but when the private sector is offering 10 to potentially 100 times that amount, the top minds inevitably leave research institutions for these... Um, astronomical private sector offers, and that trains the pipeline of future innovation. That's a serious long-term problem. Okay, so if you're a talented individual listening to this, maybe looking to enter this high leverage market, what specific job titles are seeing the highest volume of openings and critically the biggest paychecks right now? Yeah, good question. The consensus across these reports seems to point to the machine learning engineer. That seems to be the highest ranked hot job for 2025. That's right. The machine learning engineer is really the essential backbone of AI deployment. They command the highest average annual salary among the top 10 AI jobs we looked at, around $161,800. They're the ones who build, test, and deploy the models. And they dominate the market volume over 36,000 openings analyzed in the reports we saw. 36,000 openings, that's a huge volume. It is. Mm. And closely related is the deep learning specialist. They focus on the more complex neural network architectures, averaging a strong $153,000. But, you know, the AI revolution isn't just technical. It's also about integration into actual products. Right, and that's where the AI product manager comes in, isn't it? This feels like a crucial role balancing the tech side with the business strategy. Exactly. They're the translators. They translate the engineer's work into viable, profitable market products. They command a very competitive average annual salary, around $141,000 generally, Though some U.S. focus analyses put that number much higher, closer to $224,000. Oh, okay. They're essential because, let's face it, a brilliant model is worthless if it doesn't align with business goals. Makes perfect sense. And we can't forget about physical systems either. The robotics engineer, specifically with an AI focus, shows incredible market interest. Yeah, that one's interesting. Generating 54,600 monthly searches, that's more than any other AI role with an average salary around $119,100. Mm. It really shows that even as software dominates the headlines, the real world application of AI and automation is seeing a massive interest from job seekers. Definitely. But I'd say the true salary premium right now, the thing that's really pushing the envelope, is driven by the generative AI revolution. The creation of large language models, LLMs like GPT, well, that created entirely new high demand roles almost overnight. All right, so now we're talking about the prompt engineer or LLM specialist role. This is like the definition of an emerging field, right? Demanding specialized knowledge of how to effectively talk to and steer these giant models. Absolutely, and the compensation is just blistering. The entry level salary range for these roles is already starting at $140,000 to $170,000. Entry level. Entry level. And senior roles are shooting up towards $275,000. The market is valuing the ability to basically extract maximum performance from these very expensive foundational models. Right, getting the most bang for your buck from the AI. And then there's the generative AI engineer focused more on operationalizing that power. Yes, exactly. They're the ones taking the experimental pilot models and moving those Gen AI solutions into full industrial scale production deployment. Their focus on practical application, making it work reliably at scale, is rewarded with a strong average annual salary of $150,000. Because you know, production reliability is where the value truly unlocks for a company. Okay, so deployment is key there too. Definitely. Now, all these high salaries, they naturally lead us to a really fundamental question for anyone looking for a job in this space. This raises an important question. In a market that moves this fast, how much does holding a formal university degree actually matter anymore? Yeah, that's the million dollar question or maybe the $160,000 question here. The academic evidence we looked at is, frankly, surprising. It definitively supports the idea that practical expertise is king. Get this. 
While demand for AI roles grew a significant 21% between 2018 and 2023, mentions of university education requirements for those same AI roles actually declined by 15% over that identical period. Wow. The signal there is pretty clear, isn't it? It really is. The hiring trend is fundamentally shifting. It's moving toward demonstrable applied competence over just academic credentials. Our sources show that specialized AI skills alone command a huge wage premium of 23%. 22% just for the skills. Yep. And that 23% premium, it actually exceeds the financial value of almost any traditional degree right up until you get to the PhD level, which offers about a 33% premium. And what's more, job opportunities are surprisingly evenly distributed across all education levels. Associate, Bachelor, Master, PhD. Maybe most incredibly, there are nearly 1,900 roles currently open to candidates with literally zero experience listed. That last point feels really crucial for anyone listening who's maybe learning or transitioning. It emphasizes that a demonstrable, hands-on portfolio of work showing what you can do is the definitive high-value entry ticket, not just a diploma on the wall. Absolutely. Your GitHub is your resume in many ways. So, okay, let's talk about those demonstrably high-value skills then. When we look at which technical proficiencies are most frequently required in job postings, the top three are kind of the predictable necessities. Python, obviously the language of choice, dominates over 4,400 job listings, mention it, followed by SQL for managing data, and then the deep learning framework, TensorFlow. Great, those make sense as the foundation. But if you wanna know which skills pay the most, you need to look past just the model building basics, right? You mentioned focusing on the infrastructure premium. This is where the big money is. That's exactly right. The highest salaries are really commanded by specialists who can deploy, manage, and scale those models efficiently and reliably. This requires what's called MLOs, skills, machine learning operations, and serious cloud infrastructure expertise. Basically, the money is in deployment and keeping it running smoothly. Okay, so break that down for us. What are those top paying skills? Right, so that's why we see high performance computing and DevOps skills really dominating the top of the pay chart. For example, C++ specialists, often focused on high speed performance, low latency stuff, they average around $170,000 plus. Cloud formation experts, people who automate setting up cloud resources, they command about $165,000. Kafka specialists who manage that critical messaging backbone allowing huge systems to talk in real time hit around $160,000. Then you've got Terraform experts handling the critical infrastructure as code that ensures environments are predictable and secure, averaging about $155,000. And finally, Kubernetes specialists who orchestrate and manage large clusters of containers, making sure models run securely and efficiently at massive scale, they hit around $150,000. That breakdown makes perfect sense. So the money isn't just in like creating the clever algorithm. It's really in the industrial strength deployment and maintenance of that algorithm in the cloud. That's the real operational leverage companies are willing to pay top dollar for. Precisely. Building the model is step one. Making it work reliably for millions of users is where the serious engineering challenge and the serious money lies. Okay, moving beyond just salary though, the total compensation package in AI seems to be about far more than just the base pay and maybe some stock options. Our sources indicate that AI roles are statistically rewarded with what we might call a compound premium, significant non-monetary perks that really sweeten the deal. Yeah, that's one of the clearest indicators of this talent war we keep mentioning. AI roles are twice as likely to offer comprehensive parental leave. Twice as likely. And almost three times more likely to provide remote working options compared to general tech roles. Companies are definitely using these perks strategically to secure talent they otherwise couldn't afford or maybe couldn't reach geographically. And that remote work advantage is especially telling, isn't it? About a third of all AI jobs are fully remote. Right. And here's a statistic that directly contradicts what we see in a lot of other fields. Remote AI salaries are actually slightly higher on average $116,161 than on-site salaries, which average $114,140. That right there is the clearest sign that global competition is benefiting remote talent. Companies are basically forced to pay higher wages to secure the best remote individuals, regardless of local cost of living adjustments. It's leveling up the playing field for skilled people outside those traditional expensive tech hubs. So being remote in AI might actually pay more. That's fascinating. Finally, let's talk about the career path itself. We have to recognize the steep trajectory of earnings within an AI career. The salary growth curve looks breathtakingly rapid. It really is. The median salary escalates quickly from an entry-level median of about $60,374 
jumping almost double to a senior median of $116,907. Right, a huge jump there. But the real concentration of value seems to be found in leadership and strategy roles. The jump from senior to the executive level sees the median compensation hit a massive $177,512. Okay. This progression really shows that the field aggressively rewards not just deep technical specialization, but also the ability to lead teams and, crucially, translate that technical knowledge into strategic business direction. So climbing the ladder means combining tech skills with leadership and strategy. That seems to be where the biggest rewards are, yes. So if we try to uh, connect all this to the bigger picture, the data really confirms that this demand-driven AI market grants massive leverage to skilled individuals. It's undeniable. The compensation packages, when you combine the salary, the significant equity potential, and these compound perks, they're setting entirely new benchmarks for the whole tech sector, maybe even beyond. We're just in a moment where expertise in deployment and deployment in MLOps and in strategic application is literally worth millions to corporations. Yeah, the actionable message here seems pretty unambiguous, doesn't it? Mastering those high-paying infrastructure skills, areas like LLMs, MLOs, cloud deployment, that looks like the fastest, most effective route to securing a life-changing salary right now. But, you know, this intense concentration of talent and value, it has a sobering flip side for everyone else, right? We don't. Our source material notes that corporations are planning to eliminate potentially up to 200,000 positions over the next few years, specifically because AI is making those jobs obsolete. So. Given that the market is now treating a select few AI experts like these strategic chess pieces or professional athletes, as you put it, what does this intense, unprecedented concentration of value and pay actually mean for the long-term shape of the general workforce and maybe the economy as a whole? That is a profound question. It's definitely something for all of us to consider as this continues to unfold. Thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon right here on the channel.